Did you know that there are many options for homeschooling? One of those being the difference between enrolling versus registering your homeschooler. I started out by enrolling my children and we switched to registering. I'm sharing the story and all those juicy details, plus how you can decide what the best choice is for you and how you can even get the best of both worlds in this video coming right up. What have you decided? Did you enroll or register this year and are you happy with it? Take a moment and share below in the comments. Let me know what you're doing this year. In this video, I'm going to break down the difference between enrolling and registering so that you can make an informed decision for your family. Then I'll talk about why we switched and so you can hear all of the juicy details there. And finally, how you can get the best of both worlds. Whether you are enrolled or registered or you wish you were the other, how you can make this work for you. This is one of the biggest first decisions that you can make in your homeschool because it affects your funding, it affects the expectations around learning, and it even affects graduation. How do I know this? Well, hello, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Natalie Burns, and I support homeschooling moms to find freedom to reflect who they are as a family through the way that they approach homeschooling so that you can deepen your connection with your child. I have been a certified teacher for over 11 years now in the public school system as a homeschool support teacher and now on YouTube here with you so that you can learn these learning strategies for yourself and help your child grow in their learning. You can find me and more information about what I do to support you over at homeschoolteachingsimplified.com. So what is the difference here between enrolled versus registered and how can you make an informed choice for your family based on these pros and cons here. First of all, it's important to note that all children have the right to education. So by either enrolling or registering, we can see as a whole in our communities that all children are receiving a quality education in one form or another. This could be through public school, it could be through a private school, or it could be through homeschooling. When it comes to homeschooling, you can either enroll or register as a homeschooler in some areas. In other areas, you may be forced to either enroll or register. When it comes to enrolling as a homeschooler, this could be through a public or private school. And there are even certain homeschool online academies that you could enroll through. There are benefits to doing this. One of the benefits being that you actually get teamed up with a certified teacher through that homeschool academy, which is what I did before starting this business. And that teacher supports your child by ensuring that they are actually going through the required Ministry of Education content. They're looking at how your child is progressing in their learning and they are helping with reporting on that and bridging you with the Ministry of Education. This kind of home learning support teacher is going to help you create a student learning plan. They will help you identify what kind of content requirements there are for each grade level. And they will even give you some funding to put towards curriculum or classes. Now, this funding is decreasing every year, but it is still a draw, especially for larger families. Not only that, usually through these online homeschool academies, there are lending libraries for curriculum and you get access to online subscriptions, things like Brain Pop or Mystery Science. Because you have a teacher that is walking your child through this learning process, you're still teaching them yourself, but this teacher is observing and making sure that it's happening. You will need to check in with them on a weekly basis and prove what your child is working on. And this can be just fine for some families and this can be a huge burden for others. And that's why some people, even with this option of enrolling, still choose to register as a homeschooler. 
because there are no Ministry of Education requirements, no content requirements by grade, no amount of time or days needed to log as a homeschooler. You don't need to check in with somebody that you're doing things in a certain way or at a certain time. And if you register as a homeschooler through one of these homeschool online academies, you can still get limited access to these lending libraries or some of these subscriptions that the school holds and maybe even in some cases limited funding. The really nice thing about registering is that there's no more hoop jumping. You just finally get to teach the way you want to. When you register as a homeschooler, you are no longer able to get a high school diploma. So if a high school diploma is important for your child, you may want to look at enrolling, but you do not need to enroll for the whole time. You actually, in BC, Canada, as of right now, you only need to enroll for grades 10, 11, and 12 in order to still receive your high school diploma. Did I miss anything? If I did, make sure you put your question down in the comments because I would love to make sure that you get to make an informed choice for your family. All right, here's my story here. When I first started homeschooling my daughter in kindergarten, I called up the private homeschool academy to register her. And they said to me, well, are you sure you don't want to enroll and have the support of a home learning support teacher? And I said, oh no, that's okay, I'm already a teacher that's fine i don't need the extra support and they said oh well if you are already a teacher you may be able to uh, come on our team and work with us and then be your own child's home learning support teacher and support other families at the same time and i thought this is great what a wonderful idea and so i did that at first for our first years and it worked out really well until that sense that I have of that very organizational ability kind of started to overshadow the freedom that I really imagined homeschooling to have. Because what you don't see on the back end is that that home learning support teacher is looking at these ministry requirements and these check boxes of what needs to happen. And so I wanted it to be this relaxed and easygoing experience. And yet in the back of my mind, here I am looking at this checklist of all the things that I wanted to prove that I was doing. And I knew I needed to prove it because as the parent and the teacher, I knew that there was a chance that I might get audited and wanted to make sure that everything spoke for itself. Being extremely careful with this was not the way that I wanted to go about homeschooling. I wanted that relaxed and easygoing confidence, not that rigid overwhelm and structure. And so this is why I don't actually believe that one way is better than another. It really just depends on you and what your personality style is. Because if you are not on the back end checking off those boxes and you don't need to think about that or even be aware of it, then you can still teach with this easygoing, natural and intuitive approach. For the moms in my local community, we are a pretty even split between those that prefer enrolling and those that prefer registering. There's no right or wrong decision and you can really take it year by year. Well, that's my story. What's yours? Did you share in the comments already if you are enrolled or registered and if you're happy about it? Now, what if you're not happy about it? What if you don't have a choice about enrolling or registering and you really would like the benefits of the other way? Well, let me show you how you can change up your homeschooling approach to get the best of both worlds. If you are registered, I recommend that you take a little look at what the content requirements are for other children in the same grade levels or age groupings or even just zone as your child because it might give you ideas for things to include that you never even considered before. Maybe not necessarily content, but instead more like skills or competencies or even different subject areas that you didn't even know existed. Like, did you know about ADST, Applied Design Skills and Technologies? It's kind of like STEM learning. Maybe you want to consider changing things up and utilizing things like these subscriptions. Maybe your local library already has an app for audiobooks and you want to throw in something new like the Brain Pop subscription or Mystery Science or Generation Genius. 
those that enroll often get the benefit of first dibs at a class. So maybe you can look at different classes in your community, like a one day a week forest school. This way you can keep the freedom of registering, but still start to bring in some of those benefits that come with enrolling. Now, what if you are enrolled and you do want a little bit more of that freedom of registering? Well, you can actually take this what of the content and adapt it to be how you want to be learning it in your home. Go ahead and allow your child to showcase their learning in a way that works for them. Let them learn in the way that their mind connects to and then show it and communicate it in a way that they're really comfortable with so that they can enjoy the process and get so much more engaged with it. But here's the problem. If your child is going to make an obstacle course in order to show off their learning about the water cycle, then their homeschool support teacher might not actually understand what they learned. So what you can do to supplement that is something simple like maybe just an audio clip of some key points that they learned. Ask that support teacher, what are three to five things that they're really hoping to see from your child that they learned from that topic? And then go ahead and just ask them those questions verbally, have them give a quick and easy response. Then the teacher gets what they need and you get to do this how you actually want to. Maybe you wish that you had a support teacher or maybe you do have a support teacher and you've realized that they're not actually a support for you they're only really a support for your child and you would like some support for yourself. Well, that's why I created this channel because I have seen the huge lack of support for homeschooling moms and I want you to feel like you have the tools that you need to teach how you want to in your own home. The way that you approach homeschooling, whether that is enrolled or registered, makes a huge difference in the way that your child is able to grow in their learning. This is why I created the free workshop to get you started on revamping your homeschool approach so that you can connect more deeply with your child. You can see more about that at homeschoolteachingsimplified.com slash free workshop and I'll make sure I link that in the description for you. In the meantime, have a little browse around the other videos that I've made for you here and hit subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. I would love to have you here. Well, that's all for this video. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.